on pound points of small height on algebraic varieties. So let me recall the context of Monday's lecture. I had defined the notion of a polarized dynamical system. which was made of a variety, projective variety, x, of an impulse like bundle. And of a map, f, from x to x, such that the inverse image of a line model L by f is isomorphic to some power L to the G with G greater than two. And I had defined a canonical height H hat, which has a virtue of being non-negative and of detecting pre-periodic points. That is, the pre-periodic points are exactly the point of canonical height zero. Well, <coughs> uh, let me also recall that Bogomolov had conjectured that, let's say, if you take a subvariety V, well, not Zhang has conjectured uh, after uh, a particular case by Bogomolov. So if you take a subvariety V inside X, you take V naught, the union of all uh, stable F stable subvarieties W contained in V, then is it true that uh, the height that there exists some positive real number, C positive, such that the canonical height of X is greater than C for X in V minus V naught. So this is conjecture, and you could also combine this conjecture, meaning that the height is bounded from below outside of the union of the pre-periodic sub-varieties by a more uh, qualitative description of the set V naught by asking if V naught is a uh, risky closed In v. So th this first part is the analog of man minimum fault, essentially, and the second part is the analog of Bogomolov's conjecture. So uh, for the important case of abelian varieties, this conjecture has been proved by Ulmo and Zhang, and the main uh, new tool in the proof is an equidistribution theorem for small points, which they prove using Arakelov geometry. And so, uh, I want to describe the analog of the, the, the general equidistribution theorem. And for that, I have to use Arakelov geometry too. And so I need to tell you what Arakelov geometry is. So unfortunately, it's almost impossible to, to give a, a simple, uh, a single definition, correct definition of what uh, are the precise tools involved in the proof. So I prefer to tell you, to recall you the analogy between number field and function fields so that you get an insight of what are the objects involved in the theory. So the analogy goes between a geometry of variety fibered over curves and arithmetic geometry. So on one side, you have a base field, which is, let's say, the field of rational functions or the field of functions of a curve. On the other side, you have the field of rational numbers or more generally, any number field F. If you want to look at not generic vibrations, but real vibrations, so there's some, some curve, you'll get to have some base ring, say the ring of functions on an affine curve. And on the arithmetic side, you'll get the ring of integers Z or the ring of integers O if or in the number field F. 
on one side, the points are precisely the complex numbers. If the curve is uh, P1, or you could add, well, in the base ring, C of T, so it's a affine line, so you'll get the complex, points are complex numbers. And they correspond to maximal ideal of the base ring. And on the other side, you have points which are uh, prime numbers corresponding to the uh, ideal P. Well, if you want to look at schemes, you'll get on both sides a generic point which is which correspond to the prime uh, ideal zero. To any point on each side, you have the, the notion of order of vanishing of a function at that point. This is, this is just the valuation, the, the, the usual, uh, well for polynomials, it's just the order of vanishing. And for the arithmetic side, it's periodic valuation. And corresponding to these uh, orders, which are valuations, you have norms, ultrametric norms, given by exponential of minus order, order or on the geometric side, and p minus periodic valuation on the arithmetic side. Well, the, the p, the p in the, on the right should be, the p should be, could be replaced by any real numbers greater than one, but for normalization it's better to have p. So. On both sides, you have a product formula that says you that if you look at the orders of vanishing of a f rational function at all point of the projective line, so you have to add the order of vanishing at infinity, which is the degree of a polynomial, so the degree of a rational function, then you can prove easily that the sum of orders is zero. And in the arithmetic side, you have the product formula, which is uh, so a, a way to hide the decomposition of a rational, well, an, of an integer into prime numbers. The factorization, so the sum of orders is zero, and on the other side, the sum of valuation multiplied by log p plus the logarithm of the absolute value. I write infinity to, say, so just, so absolute, the usual absolute value is zero. And so, on the geometric side, you see the point at infinity appears and you, know, you call it infinity and the arithmetic side is, uh, corresponds to the Archimedean place of Q. So on the geometric side we have a curve which is B or projective line and on the arithmetic side we don't know what is the projective curve corresponding to, to Z, to spec Z. We don't know but we want to have an object that plays the role of a projective curve because we want to mimic all the tools given by algebraic geometry and to use them in, to, to, to use them in arithmetic geometry too. So, let me discuss varieties. So, uh, varieties are a variety over the function field of the curve and you can also spread them as vibrations, x, curly x to b, so the vibration family of varieties with generic fiber, precisely the variety x. And on the arithmetic side, you will look at varieties of a number fields and you want to spread them as schemes of a spec Z or spec OEF or spec OF. On one geometric side, you have points, which are uh, points of the variety X with, value, with values in the field of rational functions, C of B, and the other side, you have rational points of X. So on PN, you have just families of Homogeneous, well, homogeneous systems, uh, homogeneous system of, um, systems of homogeneous coordinates, x0, xn, where the xi belong to C of B, and on the other side, the same, but the xi belong to Q. And to each point, you can associate a section, well, if the variety is projective and if the vibration is projective, one can associate to a point a section, which will be a curve drawn on the total space of the fiber, and the same is possible in the arithmetic side. So one can spread the varieties of a, num of a number of fields or of a function fields to vibrations of a curve or of a spec Z, and one can spread rational points to curves. So line models are important uh, in uh, algebraic geometry because they give rise to intersection theory and so on. And uh, corresponding to line models on the variety, projective variety x curly x, will correspond in the arithmetic side, a similar line model 
on the arithmetic variety of the spec Z plus something at the Archimedean place. Because remember that the analog of the, of the curve B, which is here, which contains points at infinity, is really something we don't know what it is, but, but which has to incorporate the Archimedean place. And the notion we add on the line model is the notion of an Hermitian metric. So I, I'll say later what a, an Hermitian metric is with a more precise definition, but it's a way to measure the size of a section or of a local section of a line model. So if you view a line model as a family of lines, it's just families of norms which vary continuously. So on PN, one has the line model O of one on one side, on, on the other side, we have the line model O of one plus some emission metric, which is precisely the Fubini study metric. But one can choose the Fubini study metric as is used in Keller geometry. So, well, I, I write down the definition of the Fubini study metric now. We'll see it again later, but. On PN or one. So, a priori, one has to define the norm of a section of any local section on PON. But I'll show you only the definition of a global section, of the norm of the global section. So, what is a, glo a global section of, of O of 1? It's just a polynomial, an homogeneous polynomial of degree 1. So, it's something like with the form A0 naught x0 naught plus A1 x1 plus Cn Xn. Well, says the AI, and let's, let's say complex numbers if we work over, over C. So we have to, I have to tell you what the norm of the section S is at any point with homogeneous coordinates x0, xn. So this norm has to vanish when the section vanishes. Like the norm of a vector is zero when the vector is zero. So, so when does this section vanish? Precisely when n naught x naught plus a one x one plus n x n is zero. So on the numerator, I will write down the absolute value of a naught x one. But I have to add something to this definition because the numerator is homogeneous of degree one in the x side. So I have to counterbalance this and. On the denominator, I just write the usual norm of the vector the, of the vector x naught x n. So let's say square root of absolute value of x naught squared plus same for x one plus absolute value of x n squared. So this is the formula. So. On each side of the, oh, well, on each side we have divisors, and they are given by a global section. By, well, they are given by sections of line models. The, the, the locus where line models vanish. So what I've written is a bit wrong because uh, on one side, so we will have the divisor of the section uh, x naught. On, on the right, I have only written uh, the, the the schematic part of what the divisor is. So one has to add something. So it's the slide is wrong. So I should have written H naught, which is the divisor of X naught, plus something which takes into account the Archimedean place. And this things which one has to add is precisely the function minus logarithm of norm of the accession. So you see, on the, in the general oracular geometric framework, here one will have uh, uh, the analogs of sub-varieties or of cycles are not are cycles of arithmetic varieties plus something taking care of the Archimedean place, and this is something more general than a function. But it will, this is what uh, Gillet and Soule call uh, green currents. Well, uh, anyway, one can uh, give a definition for the incidence degree of a section, uh, 
the section sigma p with a divisor h naught. And if you look at it, what it is, it is precise. In principle, it would be the t-adic valuation of x naught. But this depends on the choice of homogeneous coordinates. So you divide, you subtract the minimum of all uh, t-adic uh, absolute valuation of all the xi. And then this is precisely the order of coincidence of the section sigma p with the divisor h naught uh, above t. So, oops, let me draw another picture. So you have something like that. So this is pn over b. Here one has h naught. So the section sigma p is like that. And and the valuation, the, the order of contact of this line and this divisor is precisely this incidence number. On the arithmetic side, one has a similar formula, a periodic valuation of x naught minus the minimum of val periodic valuations of all the xi. And so all these incidence numbers give rise to a degree, which is the degree, well, uh, the degree of uh, the, line, the, the, the degree on B of the line model sigma P star sigma P upper star O of 1. When one pull back the line model O of 1, which correspond to H naught on the curve B, one gets this degree, which is the sum of the incidence numbers at all points, provided uh, uh, the section is not contained in the divisor, but it's what I draw, I draw in the picture. And uh, on the arithmetic side, one will have the arithmetic degree of the same thing. So the first, you can see looking uh, at this definition, that is the sum over all points on B of uh, by minus log of norm absolute value x naught divided max, max of the xi. On the, on the arithmetic side, one has precisely the same formula, minus sum over all prime numbers plus infinity of absolute value of x naught p divided by max. Well, I've written max, and here I've written sum of squares, so ignore this, ignore this for the moment. Uh, you have to come later. But on the left-hand side, one gets the degree of the section. On the right-hand side, one gets the height. With, with that definition, one gets the, the veil height of the point, of the rational point x naught xm. So here is an analogy between uh, geometry over curves and arithmetic geometry. And on the left-hand side, one has intersection theory on the, uh, the total space of the vibration. On the right-hand side, one has arakelov gilles soulet arithmetic intersection theory. So you have seen, or maybe you just, uh, just told you that the proper uh, way to mimic uh, line bundles is metrized line bundles, line bundles with emission metrics. So now I want to tell you how one can define a notion of height for any sub-variety, which is the proper analog to the notion of degree of a sub-variety in, in algebraic geometry. So the new feature, feature is that one has to use such functions at the Archimedean place. Minus log of the norm, which appears in the formulas for the height of a point. And uh, if one wants to have all places of Q on equal foot, it's better to look also at uh, similar norms at finite places. So, uh, I'll begin by defining elementary green functions for divisors. So I consider a projective variety of our number field F, a very ample divisor, D. So D is the intersection of some hyperplane H0 uh, in, of Pn when, uh, when X is embedded in Pn. And uh, I consider any absolute value uh, on the field F and CV is the completion, not of, of F bar, well, the completion of uh, rather the algebraic closure of the complete field, F V bar, so I should read F V bar, or 
you complete with respect to an uh, extension of the absolute, absolute value V. So what is an elementary grain function for G? But it's just this function. I told you what it is at the complex place, at the Archimedean place. It's just minus log of the norm, and the norm was given by that formula, except that this this sum of squares is bad at finite places, so for the moment we put uh, maximum at finite places. And, uh, so it's just that function. Sorry? There are some. Right, but it's a log of, it's a, the absolute value is fixed, so it, I forgot the V. You, there, there are any norms. V, v is any absolute value, and you put that at all places. And, and uh, so these uh, functions are interesting because you, they, they appear naturally, but if you want the theory to be smoother, you have to allow more general functions, and what you will allow is that you'll take not only elementary green functions, but uniform limit of such uh, elementary green functions. Because if you don't do that, you won't be able to incorporate into the theory functions as uh, the canonical heights with respect to dynamical systems, for example, which are given by a limit process. So if you want things given by a limit process to be in the theory, you have to put them from the beginning. So you add a limit of elementary green functions, and this is what you call semi-positive green function. So at Archimedean places, like, like uh, what I said, it's better to not to put down a max, but a uh, uh, square root of the sum of squares. And then one gets something which is well known in uh, Keller geometry. Uh, and uh, one can attach to any elementary green function a curvature form, which is a differential form on the complex variety, which is of type 1, 1, meaning that it has dz with degree 1 and DZ, some, some dz and some dz bar, but uh, not, uh, and it's just defined by this formula, omega is ddc of gd, so ddc is some operator in complex analysis, it's some analog of Laplacian, and it's precisely equal to i divided by p, sum of g2g divided by dzg dzk bar, dzi dzg, exterior dzk bar. So you have to change the i to the j. And this differential form of type 1, 1 is precisely the restriction of the Keller form of Pn, the canonical, so the, the usual one, on the variety x of c. So what happens with uh, these curvature forms, these differential forms, when you pass from elementary green functions to uh, general green functions, general semi-positive? It happens that uh, all these differential forms converge. In general, when you take a limit of functions, that the derivatives do not converge to anything. But the fact that the Keller form are Keller, there is some positivity somewhere, we make the limits of these differential forms converge in the space of distributions. And they converge to, a, uh, not to a distribution, but to a current because it's a differential form with coefficients distributions. So it converges to to some, some, something which is a positive current of type 1, 1, meaning that it's, it is a differential form with uh, coefficient dis of degree 1, 1 with coefficients distributions, so on the complex variety, and we call it the curvature current of GD, like the curvature form, or we call the curvature form of the green current. Sorry? What do you? Uh, uh, yeah, you, you may change the embedding, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the, the, action, the question was, so how, how do you make limits of, of elementary green functions? And the answer was, uh, you, I, you change the embedding. So, for example, recall that to define the canonical uh, neuron head height on a, on a variety, it would take the multiple of a point 
and you divide it by uh, 4 to the n. So doing that corresponds to changing the Lyman mode by 2 to the n star uh, L. And so this gives you a new Lyman model and a new embedding and, well, so a new divisor, which is a multiple of the, of the old one, and new embedding. And if you change these embeddings, then you change your definition of norms. And at the limit, you get precisely what you, you should. I mean, the neuron, the local neuron, uh, local neuron, neuron pairing. So what is interesting in a, a complex case is that you could take any, uh, up, up, up. You, you could, uh, if you look at what a, a green, an elementary green function is, it looks like minus log of the equation uh, around the, uh, in the neighborhood of the divisor and uh, away from the divisor, it's just uh, something continuous. Well, it's infinity. So at the limit, green functions a priori are something which look like minus logarithm of the equation plus something continuous within the, in the neighborhood of the divisor and away from the divisor they look like anything continuous. And so it's interesting to, to observe that one can precisely detect which functions of this type are green functions. And the answer is very easy. It's just any function which looks like that but so uh, it's known such that the DDC of this G, so DDC of G will be the DDC of this function or this distribution if you want in the sense of currents. So the fact that it is looks like minus log of the equation will, uh, will make that uh, DDC will have minus the integration current on the sub variety. It's analog of DDC of log absolute value of Z is uh, integration at zero. And uh, so if you take all uh, negative functions such that DDCG plus integration on D is a positive current, then you'll get precisely all uh, green functions, all semi-positive green functions. So uh, similarly, we have these curvature forms, omega G. We can take their powers. So now you'll get differential forms of higher degrees which are uh, still positive in some sense. If you take the maximal power, you will get a volume form, which will be a measure. And uh, uh, what happens is that the limits, the, this, this, this differential form still converge to currents. And if you look at what happens for the, for the maximal power, at the limit you get a positive measure. So, uh, moreover, you can, uh, you, it's, well, you know what the total mass of this measure is because there is a classical formula in uh, complex geometry, meaning that the integral, in the, the integral of the top power of the Kähler form is precisely the degree, the Wirtinger formula. And so uh, this uh, integral uh, keeps constant in the process and at the total mass of the measure mu d is precisely the degree of the variety with respect to the divisor T. So I give you an example uh, just on P1. <laughs> so I take O of 1 and I take <coughs> this, I take this green function. So then what you get uh, is precisely the, so if you had, if we had put the color, the color form, the, the measure would be something like dz dz bar divided by uh, one plus something like that. It would be this measure. Uh, probably up, up, up. Yeah, probably, and maybe there is a coefficient. When, when we look at the norm which is defined by the max, then you simply get uh, a measure which is concentrated on the circle and which is, so the, which is what the delta L equals one means. It means uh, we restrict, restrict on the circle and then it's just integration on this circle. D theta divided by 2P. And you remember it is you know, a measure which appears, which appeared already uh, uh, on Monday uh, 
when I told you about a distribution of points on the projective line with respect to the veil height, and it appears also in the definition of the Mara measure of a polynomial. And this is not a coincidence. <laughs> so here we have a probability measure, but okay. So I have to take all places into account, so I have to put green functions, not as single places, but to have families of green functions at all places. And uh, so <coughs> this is what I call adelic green functions, so the data for any place of the field of a green function JDV at the place D. But I have to be a bit careful because I take limit processes everywhere. So if I do that, I won't get something reasonable at the end. Like if you look at what an Adel is, you can do anything you want at a finite number of places, but uh, at almost all places you have to take uh, uh, integers, viadic integers. So similarly, here we have to assume that at almost all places, the green function is an elementary green function given by a single embedding. Okay, but this is, so I change, I, I, this means that I will take an elementary green function given by a single embedding at all places minus some places where I can do what I want. And uh, this is only for uh, very ample devices and for general devices, I can write them down as differences of very ample divisors, and I will define uh, an adelic green function for such a divisor as a difference of two adelic green functions. And uh, what is important is that as elementary green functions give you a decomposition of the height into local terms, this passes very well uh, to the limit, and at, at the limit, I still have uh, another representative of the height function, but still a height function relative to the device of D, and a decomposition into local terms, which is precisely what uh, you can find in Lang's Diophantine geometry uh, in the chapter uh, about local height functions. So green. So back to metrics, because uh, Divisors are not exactly, line models are not exactly divisors and vice versa. So uh, from the point of view of, uh, I have to, to go back to line models. So as I said earlier, a metric on a line model is just a family of norms on the stokes which varies continuously. So for any local section, I have the norm of this section, which is a continuous function, which vanishes, which vanishes precisely where the section vanishes. And there is a homogeneity condition. So say if I take a section S prime, which is a, fun a section S multiplied by some function F, then the norm of S prime is just the absolute value of F times the norm of S. And uh, the only metrics I want to consider are the metrics that are related to green functions to, in the sense that I defined earlier. So I will uh, look at integrable metrics, and there are metrics such that minus log of the norm of a section is a green function for the divisor of this section. And well, one can show that it does not depend on the choice of the section or even the meromorphic section. Actually. So the example is a, Fubini, well, one example which I wrote already on the blackboard is a Fubini study metric. And uh, well, I wrote down the formula for the section of the line model O of D, but uh, it's the same. So, <coughs> I will denote a line model together with a metric by a bar on the line model. It's a standard notation in Oracle of geometry. So L bar is the data of a line model L on the variety over the number field, variety X over the number field F plus a collection, an, a collection of norms, norm V, which are uh, so that we well, correspond to green functions. Okay. So there is a notion of uh, isomorphism of neutralized line models. And uh, there is a notion of tensor product of uh, neutralized line models. I take the tensor product of the line models and I take the tensor product of norms. And in that way, I get an abelian group. If I look at only uh, isomorphism, cla isomorphism classes, I get an abelian group, which, I call, uh, which people call pig hat of X. And uh, there is a, uh, I forget 
uh, a map from pick hat of x to pick x, which corresponds to forgetting the matrix. And this is a group morphism by definition. And this group morphism is subjective because uh, any line bundle has a metric. I have also pull back, I can pull back a line bundle and I can pull back the matrix because when you pull back a line bundle, the strokes of the pullback are precisely the strokes of the first line bundle. So you pull back the norms too and you get pull back. So, so. before I can tell you about uh, heights, with respect to which rise line bundles, I have to recall you how to define uh, degrees with respect to line, line bundles. So uh, assume L is a very ample line model uh, on a projective variety X and take a sub variety Z inside X of dimension P and uh, how to define the degree of Z with respect to the line model L. Then if you <coughs> know what intersection theory is, you take the first chain class of L to the power of P and you integrate against Z. And if you don't know what that means, <laughs> then you can have a, an inductive definition. You take a section of L which does not vanish identically on Z. You look at the restriction of this section to Z. So this is a section of line model on, on Z. You, you look at the divisor of this section. You have to know what this means, but essentially it's you take the varieties where it, can, where, it, where it vanishes and you on the poles and you put appropriate orders of vanishing for all of these sub varieties, zeros and poles. And so you have a linear combination of varieties of dimension P minus one. And then you take the degree, the degree of this linear combination being the linear combination of the degrees. So for heights, it's the same, except that it's more complicated. So um, I'll first tell you when, uh, what you do if you have uh, elementary, well, when, if you have metrized line models corresponding to elementary green functions. So as in uh, algebraic geometry, one way to define the height is to use arithmetic intersection theory, but I presume you don't know what that means. So C1 hat of L bar is just the first chain class uh, of L bar is some arithmetic Chow group defined by Gilles and Soule. And uh, in principle, you can take the P plus one power of this arithmetic class and integrate it against Z, which is some integration. And uh, so the P plus one, uh, I have to explain first the, the P plus one. Remember that we are looking at varieties of a number of fields. And these varieties are the analog of generic fibers of vibrations. When you look at heights and degrees on generic fibers of vibrations, what you do is to spread out the vibration over the one dimensional base. So you get a total space which, is of, uh, which has dimension one more and the varieties, the cycles have dimension one more that one they have on the generic fiber. So the same happens here. So if you look at a rational point, you have to think of it as a curve. Like spec, so you, so how will you define? So, so you have a global definition, C1 hat of L bar to the power of P plus one integrated against Z. And you have also an inductive definition. Then you take a divisor D, which is in the same linear class as L. You look at the cycle Z cap D, which is well, a cycle of dimension P, P minus one if D is not contained, if D does not contain Z. And this height, this, this part, will, you will compute by, uh, by induction. So C1 to the L bar to the P, Z cap D. But there is a corrective term because this, this thing, a priori will not take into account the, the place at infinity at least in the, in the step of induction. So to take into account the, the place at infinity, you will have to integrate over all the varieties, the ambient variety, Pn, or maybe I could have written, so Gd times omega p delta z. So this delta z means that I integrate, in fact, over z of c. But well, z of c might be singular, so forget that. So I integrate omega d to the p, which is just the color, the color form restricted to, uh, of, of Z. And I multiply by GD, which is the green function. 
So one problem with this formula is that GD has logarithmic singularities, so one has to check that this integral converges. But uh, it, it does converge. So, uh, okay, um, I explained. Transpose slide. And so, if you want to devise a general machinery of height, then you will uh, build it from this elementary case using multilinearity. That remember that uh, the, the intersection uh, product of joint classes in algebraic geometry is multi it's linear in each uh, C1, so uh, there is some multilinearity in the machine. And uh, there are limit processes for the definition of the metrized line model, so I have to uh, go to, to look at what happened when I pass, when the previous formulas pass to the limit. Uh, How to get back like that. So I have to take care that uh, when, when GD converges to a general green function, for an omega p to the d with omega d to the p with converge to something to some current, and I have to take to be sure that uh, everything okay. But the fact that all these things are positive, there is positivity everywhere in the definition of semi-positive uh, uh, green functions. So this will make the convergence. This, uh, so um, if I look at points, the height of a point P is precisely the height of the cycle P. So if I want to look at, if P is an algebraic point, then uh, from the point of view of variety over the number field F, it's like, uh, it's a, I have to look at the, the thing in, in terms of, of schemes. So it's, it, one has to look at all of the conjugates. So it is uh, something which is a bit bigger, so I have to, and divided by, the degree of the point P over F, and if I look at the formula, it's just uh, the sum over all absolute values of the minus log of the norm of the section S, defining the divisor D at the point P. So this is what the definition uh, gives for points, and you see that it's precisely the definition of, of the height. So at least for points, one way covers the classical height functions. Well, there is also a formula which is classical in algebraic geometry and which generalizes in this context. It is a projection formula. So if I have a map from y to x and some subvariety z in y and a metrized line model on x, then I can do two things. I can pull back the line model from x to y. So this is f upper star of L bar. And I can push down this, the variety z to a cycle on x. And the projection formula compares the two objects. So it tells you that the height of z with respect to the pullback of the line model is precisely the, the height of the image of z. Well, not exactly of the image, but of the image multiplied by the degree of f. Has to, so the f, f lower star z is the degree of f multiplied by f of z. So now, <coughs> what about dynamical systems and canonical uh, and polarized dynamical systems? So remember that the, why is it? It's there, and there is a hint of the limit process defining the canonical height here in the backdrop. And you can mimic that process in the language of metrized line models and define on the line model L a canonical metric, which does not depend on any choice, well, it does depend on the choice of the isomorphism uh, between f uh, upper star L and L to the D. And uh, so I call epsilon this isomorphism. And there is a unique metric such that this morphism is an isometric. And from the point of view of green functions, you can also see what happened. You took a divisor D corresponding to, the sec to a global section S of L, then if you look what the isomorphism epsilon does, it gives you a rational, fun it, it gives you a, a linear equivalence between the divisor F upper star D and the multiple D times D. So it gives you a rational function, well-defined uh, alpha, such that F upper star D equals DD plus D alpha. I did not understand the beginning of the question. Um, you said that this is a spherical Right. What are, 
Well, uh, semi-positive means that the curvature form is, is not a Keller form. It's, it's only the curvature form. But I, I tell you one, one recent theorem. Uh, if you look at the measure, the, the, so the top power of this curvature current, then this measure has a support. And this support is a closed subset of the variety. As a, any closed subset, it has a Hausdorff dimension. Then, the, in general, the, the measure you get is not absolutely continuous with respect to the Hausdorff measure of that dimension. So it's a measure which is very strange and uh, to understand it, it's, it has a very bad behavior. And the case where, for example, the case where uh, this measure is bounded below by some Keller form, like uh, some volume form, corresponds exactly to the case of the lattice maps. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> so these, these, these measures are complicated. So uh, as there is a unique uh, metric, there is a unique local green function, which is well defined with, uh, which is, uh, with, which behaves well with respect to the dynamical system. And so the, function, the functional equation, which is g, g of f of x, is d times g of g d of the bop, 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 bop. So there is one f that should be erased, but I don't know which. Uh, <laughs> probably the second one. <laughs> Uh, so minus log of alpha of x for any point x that x does not belong neither to d nor to the inverse image of d. And the measure c1 l bar of to the power of dim x, which is defined by the limit process of measures attached to metrized land models, is exactly a multiple by, of the canonical measure uh, mu f, canonical measure which I explained two days ago. And the multiple is just... Uh, the degree of the line normal L. So nothing mysterious. So if you believe in all that constructions, now you have for any subvariety a canonical height defined by <coughs> this metric, uh, by, by the height defined by this canonical metric. And the first thing I want to remark is if, if you look at a, a pre periodic subvariety, I mean a variety whose forward or by orbit is finite, I mean, there are some, uh, some integers n and p such that fn of v is equal to fn plus p of v, then the height of the subvariety will be zero. As earlier, if you take a pre periodic point, then its height is zero. And the proof is a very easy application of the projection formula, so I describe it for you. Uh, first, assume that V is fixed, so V equals F of V. Then you can look at the height of F now star of V. So by the projection formula, it's the height of V with respect to the inverse, the, the line model F upper star of L bar. But uh, there is still a misprint. Uh, this f upper star of L bar is uh, L bar to the d, not uh, f upper star of. There are misprints, so I have to. I don't anything. Sorry. So, so this height by the projection formula is f upper star L bar of V, since F upper star L bar is isometric to L bar D, this is the same. Now, by the multilinearity, this is equal to D to the power P plus one uh, H L bar of V. Okay? And uh, on the other side, you can compute what F lower star of V is. F lower star of V, is a degree of f from v to v times v. And the degree you can compute using uh, usual uh, intersection theory. And what you will get is that the degree of, say, let's say, f flower star v 
is equal by the same reasoning to d to the power p degree of v. And when you compare both things, you get that the height of v is equal to d times the height of v. And since d is greater than 2, the height has to be 0. Okay? So, uh, so we have seen that for subvarieties, uh, for pre-periodic subvarieties, the height is 0. And uh, for points, recall that uh, the fact of being of height 0 was a characterization of pre-periodic points. So it's natural to expect that varieties of height zero, of height zero, will be pre-periodic. And uh, it is a theorem by Shou Zhang that this natural statement, that the fact that any subvariety of height zero is pre-periodic, is equivalent to the fact that Bogomolov's conjecture holds for these dynamical systems XF. So one has a relation between this natural uh, uh, generalization of what was known for points to varieties, but it's conditional to Bogomolov's conjecture. So, uh, and this theorem is uh, due to the fact that the height of points and of subvarieties, which are a priori quite different, are strongly related. And they are related by an inequality, which I need to describe, and which is related to arithmetic positivity. Uh, up, up, up. No, what, uh, but, um, I can't say that for the moment. It's too complicated. Well, uh, but probably it's better that I stop here because it needs a quarter of an hour to explain the third part. So, <laughs> so I stop here and go on uh, on Friday to explain the last two parts of the talk. And if I have time, I'll say you a hint of the periodic analog, but uh, probably won't be possible. Thank you.